in this day and age, God is pouring out his power on the prophetic. However, it's not just going to drop on us. There are secrets that we need to know. There are things that we need to know directly from the heart of God that are going to help each one of us who is prophetic to step into this new age of power that God has for us. And that is what I'm going to talk about today on this week's weekly word of prophetic encouragement. My name is Arlene Westerhoff, and this indeed is my weekly word to you. These weekly words are meant to help you to step into the next level of what God has for you. And so it is my joy and it is my pleasure to be joining you once again to give this weekly word. These words are prophetic, but they are also apostolic. What does that mean? It means that these words actually are filled with revelation, but they are also filled with the steps that we need to get there. And especially for this week, when we are talking about keys to power in the prophetic, especially in the time in which our world is, we need to know what God is trying to say to us at this time. And so, as a result, if you want power, you know, just put your hands up and say amen in the chat. I'm going to start in Luke chapter 9. Jesus, he's about to be crucified, but he's entering Samaria on his way to Jerusalem. And the people in Samaria should have welcomed him. But instead of welcoming him, what did they do? They actually rejected him. The Messiah was rejected by the Samaritans. And James and John, the sons of thunder, as we know them, you know, they looked at Jesus and they said, Lord, shall we call down fire on them? Now, I can imagine, you know, that these two guys, they were standing there and they were really keen to be able to do this. And it was even biblical. Why? Because Elijah and Elisha, two prophets from the Old Testament, whom James and John knew of, they also called down fire from heaven on those who opposed them. And so James and John were being very biblical in their response. But in Luke chapter 9, Jesus says to them, you know, Jesus says to them, he rebuked them, and he said, you don't know what manner of spirit you are. You don't know what spirit you're of. And then Jesus turned around, and he went another way. He took a detour to Jerusalem. Now, that is really, really significant. What was Jesus saying here, actually? You know what? He was saying, literally, you know, I haven't come to take men's lives. He said that earlier in the Gospels, but he said, I've come to save them. And so that was Jesus's heart. However, Jesus, just three chapters later, in Luke chapter 12, he says something different. In Luke chapter 12, verse 49, he says, I have come to set the world on fire, and I wish it were already burning. And then he talks about a terrible baptism of suffering that he was going to have to endure before he set the world on fire, the fire of judgment. And so we have two passages in Luke. One, the fire of judgment that James and John wanted to call down upon the Samaritans. And the second, in Luke chapter 12, where, you know, Jesus talks about a fire of judgment too. But in chapter 9, he says, you know, you don't know what spirit you're off yet to James and John. And so he didn't call down fire. He wanted mercy instead of judgment. And in Luke chapter 12, he says, I've got, you know, I wish I could call the fire down now, but I have a baptism of suffering to go through first. You know what? These are one in the same heart attitude. And what was Jesus saying here? He was saying, you know, there is power that I'm going to be entrusting to you. 
but you are not going to be able to walk in that power until you are able to walk in my love. And that is one of the key keys for prophets and God's prophetic people in this season. You know, I think a lot about revivalists, you know. All of us are looking for revival. We are wanting revival. And we know that revival is on God's timeline. However, God is saying he's not going to trust us with power until he's able to trust us with his love. And that is something that is key. And you know what? We see this also in the lives of Elijah and Elisha. Interestingly enough, this is something that God is taking us back to as a com prophetic community. You know, I'm just coming off of the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders meeting in Dallas, where I'm part of the council, led by Cindy Jacobs. And one of the key things that we talked about this year that was necessary for prophets was relationship and the value of covenant. You know what? Even as I speak that out, I can feel the weightiness of God's word on this, the value of covenantal relationship. And so we're going to take a look at Elijah and Elisha again. Why? Because these two men were scary. You know, they called down fire from heaven. As I said before, kings feared them. Their opponents feared them. Enemy armies feared these two guys, you know, and so they were powerful prophets. How many of you want to be like Elijah and Elisha? You know what? I certainly do. If you do, can you just type me too in the comments on that? I want to be like Elijah and Elisha. But even these men who called down fire from heaven, you know, God was doing something different in their lives. Elijah had already had a history of calling down fire from heaven. And it was a new era. A new era was about to begin with Elisha. And so he had yet to do that. But God was showing what God showed him and what God did with him is a key and really important for us as prophets today to learn. And so we're going to spend the rest of the time in this broadcast in 2 Kings. Now, in 2 Kings... Chapter 2, verse 1, it said, When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were traveling from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Bethel. And Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went again together to Bethel. Now, this is really something that is very, very significant. Elisha was learning the value of a covenantal relationship with his mentor, Elijah. And so he went to Bethel. We all know Bethel means the house of God. And in Genesis chapter 28, Bethel was the place where Jacob, you know, well, he lay down to sleep. He put a stone under his head and he dreamt and he saw a ladder reaching up to heaven and angels going up and down on the ladder. And then God himself introduced himself to Jacob. And he said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. I'm the God of your father, Isaac. And Jacob saw glory with the angels. We're living in an age in which a lot of God's prophets are talking about new levels of glory. Jacob experienced it at that time. And you know what? Even though Jacob, you know, he was called and he was anointed. He didn't know God as he should have. God wants to give each of us in the prophetic our own Bethel, our own new revelation of who he is for us. And that is what Jacob got at Bethel. So Bethel is the house of God in this new era. God is taking us all to our new Bethels where we receive a new 
vision of who he is. And that vision in combination with covenant is that new vision of what he did for us on the cross. Anyway, Elijah sticks, or at least Elisha sticks to Elijah's side. And then they go to Jericho. And, you know, in verse uh, four, Elijah says to Elisha, you know, you know, you stay here. I need to go to Jericho. And Elisha wouldn't do it. El Jericho. Jericho was the place of victory. You know, in the book of Joshua, it was a place of victory, amazing victory. But before Jericho, you know, the children of Israel, the men, the fighting men had to be circumcised. Prophets of God who are watching this broadcast today, God is calling many of us to war. This is a season of war in the spirit. And as we go to war, you know what? God is saying he is circumcising our hearts once again. But after the circumcision. And that is where we are now. You know, our hearts have been circumcised. We've been in the fire. We've been under pressure. I've spoken in previous weekly words about the fact that he is leading the body of Christ and especially his prophets now out of the wilderness. But as we come out of the wilderness, we are coming out of the wilderness, leaning on our beloved. And that's amazing. And so we're coming out of the wilderness, leaning on our beloved. And what does that mean? It means that we have given up our own agendas. We have given up our own desires, our own thoughts about what our future should look like. And now we're ready to pick up God's thoughts and God's ideas and God's assignment for us. And now the Lord says, we're ready for victory. We're ready for breakthrough. You know, even as I speak out those words, I myself have spoken out in prophetic words in different years, you know, breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. But this is the way to breakthrough. Through the fire, through the circumcising of our hearts, then God gives us breakthrough. Anyway, they went to Jericho and they also crossed the River Jordan, Elijah and Elisha. This is indeed a breakthrough season, but we're going to have to leave the old us behind and cross over the Jordan into the new season. And it was only after crossing the Jordan, which was also a bit of a task, miraculous power was needed from Elisha's end for both he and Elijah to cross the Jordan. But after they crossed it, then and only then did Elijah turn to Elisha and say, what can I do for you? What do you want from me? And it was then that Elisha said to him, give me a double portion of your anointing. You know what? This is the second key and the last key to power that I'm going to deal with today. First key to power, once again, was that God is not going to entrust us with power a level of power that we haven't seen before until he knows that we know how to love. And the second key is literally, you know, that covenantal relationship with him and with each other. So that as we come out of the wilderness, you know, and as we stick together in relationship with him, love God, love others, then he can let the power fall. Elisha, demonstrated his love for God and his love for Elijah by refusing to leave his side. And as they crossed the Jordan, after he had passed many tests, Elijah looked at him and said, you've asked a difficult thing, asking for a double portion of my anointing. But if you see me when I'm taken away from you, then you will have what you ask for. And God himself made sure that after all of that, that Elisha saw Elijah as he was being taken up. His heart had been tested. Elijah's mantle fell to the ground. And we all know what happened after that. He struck the Jordan with the mantle. And he said, where is the God of Elijah? And the, you know, the Jordan just parted. 
and he was able to walk across it. And that began a new era in the prophetic, not only for Elisha, but also for the nation. Because now he was a man who God could trust with double the power, double the anointing of the great prophet Elijah. And that is what God is trying to say to us today as his prophets. Have we learned how to love? Can he trust us? And also, have we learned the value of covenantal relationship both with him and with others? Because when we do, that's when he's going to pour out his power. And so that is what I just speak out over you today. And I want to pray for you, Father in heaven, Lord, for everyone watching. God, I ask, Lord, Father, that you would help us not just to be warring prophets who know how to call down fire from on everything, but Lord, that you would help us to be able to do it. Lord, knowing that you went through a baptism of suffering because you did, Lord, we're not greater than you. God, we will too. But Father, it's worth it because God, at the end of the journey, Father, there is an anointing that you will entrust us with that the world has not seen to date. And God, it's for the fame of your name so that the world will know that you live. I just want to say thank you for joining me for this weekly word of prophetic encouragement. You know what? This is a time in which we've just stepped into a new season. I know a lot of prophets have said that in the past, but this whole decade is strange. And 2023 will begin a new season. This is not my prophetic word, by the way, for 2023. I'll be releasing that at the beginning of January. But I want to encourage you as we move into this, God has got more for you. Expect more power on your prophesying as we move further. God bless you. And I look forward to joining you again next week on my weekly word of prophetic encouragement.